These can sink pretty well anything coming into the harbor. They have an effective range of about two miles. I think I mentioned this uh, to, to some people there earlier on. At two miles distant, they could hit a, uh, a four meter wide target and punch through 17 inches of wrought iron plate. So that's, that's not too bad. Project off one of these is about 400 pounds. Again, very hefty. And uh, the gun itself weighs about four tons. Uh, these sit on uh, great big traversing platforms. Uh, it's basically a, a sloped gun carriage so that it makes it easier to push it, uh, push it forward out through the, uh, the gun port there. Traverses along these racer beds that you see uh, the railroad tracks sitting along. So you have a, a view all the way along uh, the, the horizon there. Essentially, there are four guns down here. If you came into the harbor to try and attack it, you'd have all four guns firing at you from the lower battery from whichever way you came in. You'd also have all eight guns on top, so you'd be in an awful lot of trouble if you tried to attack the harbor this way. Now, uh, in the First World War, they replaced, of course, the, uh, the upper battery with uh, quick-fire batteries, but by that time, uh, essentially, that was obsolete. George Island, uh, by 1869 to 1871, which is about when the 3rd Brigade of the Royal Artillery, like I'm dressed up as, were out here, uh, these guns actually made this style of fortification completely obsolete because it was too far into the city. The, uh, the guns, once you came in this far, if you had guns like this, you could hit all of the, uh, all of the city and all of the defenses of the citadel. So they needed to move the defenses outward. So by this time period, uh, basically you were building things on McNabb's Island and further out uh, just to, to try and keep the defenses further and further away from the city of Halifax itself. So, uh, really, by World War I, th if they got in this far, you were in trouble anyway. Now, a couple other things to, uh, to point out here. You also have uh, these pieces right here are actually part of a, uh, of a door system. There'd be doors that would go across here just when the gun wasn't, uh, wasn't firing and defend the gunners inside here. Also, you have two curtains made out of uh, basically woven hemp rope that would be wetted down before the gun was fired and drawn across just basically around the barrel of the gun. What it does is it protects the gunners inside this room from any sort of debris or shrapnel or uh, heated up wadding, which is the stuff that we used to keep the shot in with, uh, that might come back in when a uh, when shot was fired. So it was a good, good defense measure inside here. Uh, now, about firing the gun, You'd have about a 17-man gun crew working on the gun in here, but only one man fired the gun. It was the, uh, the, the gun captain, the, the number one of the gun, would uh, stay in the room while everyone else left and shut the doors uh, to fire the gun because uh, 130 pounds of black powder will do an awful lot of damage to your ears. And uh, so everybody else just shouted very loudly so that their boss could hear them. <laughs> These guns were made in England and shipped over. Uh, basically, the, uh, the foundry technology in Nova Scotia in the 1860s, 1870s wasn't, uh, wasn't up to, to par to build things like uh, this scale. Uh, they were basically just producing blister steel by the 1870s. So, uh, blister steel is basically where you take iron and try to impart carbon to make it into steel just by um, applying a source of carbon directly to its surface, like, uh, like coal or charcoal. So it's a very primitive way of making steel. Um, these guns are made of solid steel. Um, they couldn't do this in Nova Scotia at the time. They, uh, they had to make it in segments in England, uh, compress it all together, it's made of big coils of steel, uh, and then shrink each one of these tubes onto a, a single barrel. So it's a very complex procedure that they couldn't do.
three, pair, three wild Indians in there. 